Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how to turn this centrifugal inspired turned piece. Now this was an absolute blast to make. I really really enjoyed this and it's definitely inspired me to be more creative and challenge myself a little bit more with my wood turning. So let's get going with turning this centrifugal inspired turned piece. I started out by roughing a piece of oak to round and I used a 27mm thick piece of oak here. So here are the three images that I used to inspire my piece and the theme for the YouTube cross channel challenge was Mimic. So I chose an image of a centrifugal turned piece and two images of a galaxy from space. And these were the rough colours and themes that I wanted to incorporate in my piece but I wasn't too fussed if it didn't exactly match this. So I used a combination of two different round scrapers to turn this, my standard one and a slightly smaller one which I found quite good for getting that radius on the bottom. I played around with the shape until I had something I was happy with and to be honest this was just a bit of experimentation as this is pretty much the biggest thing I can fit onto my lathe. As you can see it's quite big for my lathe but it was really good pushing the lathe to its limits and really experimenting and seeing what different forms I could create. I then sanded to 120 grit so I could see what I was working with. So I've turned the outside to the platter and it's out of a piece of end grain oak. I found this extremely difficult to turn, I don't particularly turn much end grain oak. Um, so I did find it quite hard turning against that part of grain, but I got there in the end and I think it looks pretty nice on the outside. It's actually very interesting because it almost looks like this isn't centred because of how the grain swirls around. I don't know how well you can see that, but you can see this bit is much more round and then over here you can see you've got this bit of grain, this is sort of the end grain part I was on about at this top here. And I found that particularly difficult to turn. So what we're going to do now is we'll flip it around so we can get to this surface, we'll sand it back probably to like 120, maybe 240, then we'll apply a black base coat. Now ideally you want to use something like an acrylic or a spray paint black and then we're going to put the um, centrifugal turning on this. I then created a box which I was going to use to put around the lathe and this protects the lathe and the surrounding workshop from all of the flying paint. I just used some scraps of chipboard here, they weren't all exactly the same size but it really didn't matter as this is literally a simple box that's just going to protect the lathe. I then used a scrap of carpet on the back and cut a small hole in it which allowed the headstock to fit through. So here we have my improvised spray booth thing, so it's a piece of carpet because it didn't have any cardboard and it's attached to four scrap bits of chipboard and that goes around the lathe and it just stops all the paint getting flinged around my workshop. And then this hole allows the headstock spindle to go through and then I can turn. So I've just finished turning the outside of this. I've sanded the outside to 1,500 grit and this side to about 320. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna apply some black paint and first we need to apply cellulose sanding sealer. So I'm gonna apply that, then I'll buff it off on both sides, then we'll put the black paint over this side I'm not going to put any sealer on it, despite the fact you would generally put a sealer over before you put paint on. I don't think I will in this case because this timber doesn't feel like it needs it. So we won't seal this side, but we will seal this side. And then we're going to apply some black paint, leave it for 2-3 hours and then we'll come back later this evening and do some centrifugal turning, which is going to be awesome. Apologies for the noise of the rain, there's not a lot I can do about it. But what we are going to do is apply some cellulose sanding sealer to the outside of the bowl, or platter, or whatever you wish to call it. That rain is really quite irritating me. Right, just give it a little spin. That ought to do it. I then painted the face of the blank in black and I used a small brush to do this which helped me get into all of the little nooks and crannies and then I used a big brush to smooth it all out and ensure there are no uneven paint strokes. I then applied one more coat off camera and left it to dry. So the time has finally come to spin some paint on the lathe. I've chosen blue, red and gold which is inspired by my image. I'm a little bit nervous. Let's see how it goes and I'll show you the contraption I've built. So here's my weird and wonderful box with the carpet and the chipboard and then we've got the piece in here so hopefully you can see that spin it up and then we're going to put these three colours on it we'll put a dot there there, there and there wish I hadn't done that with dusty hands um, so let's just get on with this and hope it works alright so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a big dab of red paint this is the plan anyway 
don't know how much we need, so let's try. Let's try that. Okay, here goes. Ready, steady, go. Let's just see how much red paint we get flinging. Oh, wow. Oh, that's amazing. That's so cool. I hope you can see that. Let's keep it going for a bit longer. That should be about enough fling. Yep, now we're going to put some more red along it. Right, fling it up. Okay, we need a bit more paint some places. Okay, I'm liking that so far. Let's move on to the blue. Okay, so we're going to use a nice deep blue for this part. Spin it up. Let's have a look at that. Yeah, a little bit more paint's needed, I reckon. Probably should have decided to check how much paint I had before I, before I started, but you know I didn't. I'll give this a couple of seconds. Have a look at that. Okay, wow, we're getting some um, quirky patterns. As I said, this is my first ever time doing this, so let me go. Let me know what you guys think. I think it looks pretty cool so far. I also need to remember it can look natural. Spin that up. Let's have a look, see how much paint we've got on there. Yeah, we're going to need a lot more gold. Let's see what I can get out of this tiny little container. Quite a lot of paint I've just flung there. Okay, I'm liking this. I don't know what this blue thing is here, but it's kind of nice, whatever it is. This is definitely out of my comfort zone, but something I think I need to try more often, because this is fun. I mean, I should probably get some paints if I'm going to keep doing this, rather than use whatever these are. So I want to add a little bit more still. A bit more blue would be quite nice. Some really could do some blue there. Let's have a look at how that looks. Okay, we've got some nice patterns here. Let's get a bit more blue going here. Okay, that's good for the blue. Let's get some more red going. This is a very messy project, I have to say. Just as well I built this booth thing to go around it. Otherwise it'd be a different story. Filling that up. Because what you've got to remember is the centre is going to be hollowed. So I need to account for that in this. Let's get some red here. The box seems to be doing its job at the moment. Okay, we need a little bit more gold and blue, I think. Blue, something needs to go here in this corner. Maybe some more red. I can't paint my hands. Let's have a look at that. 
Yeah, let's get a little bit gold going. So with the piece on the lathe, I'm now going to hollow out the inside. I then moved on to hollowing the inside of the blank to create the divot which would essentially act as a mini bowl. Now this was fairly quick to do, again I used my round scraper and just consistently checked the depth to ensure that I wouldn't go through the bottom of the blank. I did have to remove the four faceplate screws so I had to go a little bit bigger than I would have usually, but I think this worked really well and left a nice rim size. I then sanded from 120 grit up to 400 grit on both sides, and then I also added a final 1500 grit sand, applied some cellulose sanding sealer, and some wood turners blend over the top of that. Using a clean piece of cloth, I then buffed the outside and the inside, and then used a clean cloth with a little bit of water on it just to clean up the paint where all the dust had been laid on it. I then very carefully pried the blank off the lathe, and then cleaned up the bottom using a very sharp chisel and a little bit of 120 grit. Thank you very much for watching this video. I really enjoyed making this. It was really, really fun, and I love how it turned out. So we've got a really nice finish on the bottom. We've got a bit of oak with cellulose sanding sealer and wood turners blend on the outside just giving it a nice subtle shine then we've got the acrylic paints on the front we've got red blue and it's like a gold sort of yellowy gold and then we've got this turn dish in the middle which is also finished with wood turners blend and cellulose sanding sealer i'm really happy with it overall though and i hope you enjoyed watching the video as much as i enjoyed creating it thank you very much for watching